So you designed your first website and you got hooked. Not only was it super fun for you, but you also realized you're totally a natural at it. You found the entire process to be therapeutically creative and relatively easy. And then you soon realize web design is something you'd actually really, really love to do. You constantly research ways to make it into something bigger than just a hobby. You even start thinking, maybe I could quit my soul sucking full-time job and do something I actually enjoy for a living. A lot of ladies who are stuck in corporate jobs often wonder like, does everyone hate their job? Is it just a part of the package that you get when you become an adult? Spoiler alert, not everyone hates their job. Some people consider Mondays their favorite day of the week. Yes, really. So how can you turn dreaded Mondays into a day you actually look forward to? Stick around to find out because I'm going to share with you the five steps that you need to take right now to go get your web design business off of the ground. The first thing you need to do is choose a niche. Now you might be wondering what the heck's a niche. Here's an example that will help you understand it. Imagine you are a designer and you start designing websites for makeup artists, IT businesses, restaurants, wedding venues, and real estate agents. Now you can imagine these websites would look vastly different from each other and might even require different design skills or different tech knowledge. A makeup artist would need an entirely different website from an IT business, wouldn't you agree? This is where having a niche comes in super handy. It simply means choosing a segment of people or businesses that you want to work with. So let's say your passion is to work with beauty salons because you like their work and you understand it. You can niche down and create websites for them and only them. And I know what you're thinking, but won't I be leaving money on the table that way if I only go into this one niche? Now, this is a common concern, and let me assure you that this will not happen. In fact, you can charge way more for your services when you specialize in a specific niche. If I owned a beauty salon and I needed a website, I would hire a web designer who specialized in my field because I know they have experience working with services that I provide. And trust me, there are hundreds of thousands, probably even millions of beauty salons, so I wouldn't say it's narrowing your pool of people very much, because I doubt you can do a million websites. You can even take it further and segment your niche down. So so listen to these examples. No niche would be, I build Squarespace websites. A niche would be, I build Squarespace websites for beauty salons. And a segmented niche would be, I build Squarespace websites for beauty salons specializing in wedding hair and makeup. So here is your homework. Spend some time thinking about exactly who you wanna serve and what type of websites that you would like to create. Now, number two is designing your brand. I have to put a disclaimer on this step because many new web designers get caught up in branding and I don't want you to overthink it. Yes, branding is absolutely important, but it shouldn't stop you from starting your work. Now, there are two roads you can take when it comes to your branding. Just because you're a web designer does not automatically mean you're a brand designer, so you can do it yourself or you can outsource it to a professional. Both are totally fine. If you don't have the extra money to invest in branding right now, you certainly don't have to. You can totally do it yourself. Using platforms like Pinterest to get inspiration and Canva to design your brand kit. Here are some basics you need to consider for your brand. You need to choose colors. Choosing a primary color and one to two accent colors is ideal. Try not to go overboard. You really only need a few. Choose a few legible fonts. If you want to get fancy with script fonts, use them only as accents, not to actually write lots of text on your page. The most important thing is for clients to understand what you are saying. Now, I recommend choosing two fonts, one for headings and subheadings and another for the body text. Now name, this one is really tricky. Many of my students struggle with choosing a name because they think it has to be trendy or catchy, but the truth is that you wanna pick something that will stand the test of time. Choosing a name that you won't hate in a few years or even a few months is important. My recommendation, if you are stuck, go with your own name. It's great for building your personal brand and you won't get bored of it. Logo, create a simple logo that looks great when it's big and small. Again, avoid thin lines and scripts that are not legible. If you're not sure, you can just take the initials of your first and last name or business name. And if this is completely overwhelming and you have some spare cash to throw at it, I recommend outsourcing your branding to an expert. You can find incredible brand strategists on Instagram and also in Facebook groups it tend to be a really good place to find them. And moving on to number three, choose your services and create your packages. Now that you have your niche and your branding, it's time to select the services that you wanna offer. Let me say this right from the beginning. You don't have to offer everything just because you can. I don't recommend offering more than a couple of services initially. You certainly do not wanna overwhelm yourself by spreading your time and your skills too thin. Here is a simple exercise you can do. Take a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle to make two columns. In one column, write down all the things you love to do, related to web design, of course. And in the other column, write down all the things that you're good at. Then check if there are any overlaps between the two. If yes, then these are the services that you should be focusing on right now. Once you have a clear idea of the direction you wanna go, it's time to create your pricing structures. Now, there are many 
ways that you can do this. You can charge hourly, you can charge per project, you can even create monthly retainers for clients. The world is really your oyster when it comes to clients, but remember this, do not charge what others are charging simply because it's easier. You wanna make sure you feel comfortable with how much you're charging your clients because you will be the one doing the work at the end of the day. Some web designers may be charging $30,000 for a website, but this number may not work for you and your business just when you're starting out. On the other hand, you may see a new designer charging $500 for a website, but you may know that you are worth more than that. So here's the beauty of having your own business. You get to choose how much you wanna charge your clients and you can adjust it as you get better and gain more experience. You truly decide how much you make when you own your own business. Ultimately, with pricing, it's a game of testing and seeing what works for you and your lifestyle. There is no right or wrong answer here. Number four is to build your own website. It goes without saying that if you wanna be a web designer and be taken seriously, you should have a website that preferably you've created yourself. Your website can also be your portfolio. Every time someone visits your website, they should be able to see a glimpse of your web design skills. Be sure to include things like your services, a contact form, and a little bit about yourself and the type of clients that you want to serve. And number five is to market it yourself. Now that you'll have all the basics down, it's time to put yourself out there and get noticed by your dream clients. There are many ways to find clients, but I believe in building your personal brand so clients can actually find you. Plus, constantly pitching yourself and convincing clients that you are their web designer is pretty exhausting. You should strive to have clients wanting and wishing to work with you because they love your work and feel incredibly connected to what you offer. The best way to do that is by creating a marketing strategy for your business. An easy way to start is with social media. Think about your ideal client and where they hang out, then make yourself visible in that place. Let's say you wanna work with course creators who primarily use Instagram. You should create an Instagram profile and develop an educational, inspirational, and relatable content for your course creators so that they can find you on Instagram. If social media is not your jam, totally hear you, that's okay, it's not mine either. Here are a few other ideas. You could start a blog on your website, make educational YouTube videos, network at in-person events, invest in paid advertising, or offer to speak at a conference. The most important thing is to put yourself out there and be visible. After all, your ideal clients won't wanna work with you if they can't find you. And there you have it. The five steps that you need to take right now to start your web design business. Starting any business can feel overwhelming if you try to do everything all at once, but here's the beauty of it all. You don't have to have it all figured out at the start, I promise. If you've already taken these steps, which I've mentioned, and you're still struggling to find clients, then you need to go check out my quiz. It is all about determining which client finding method matches your personality type. Once you get your result, you're gonna know exactly which marketing strategy to pursue, which you are going to absolutely love doing. To take the quiz and to solve your client finding fears for good, head to pbcourses.com forward slash quiz or catch that link also in the description below. And finally, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any more web design tips, tricks, and trainings in the future. And also leave any questions that you have for me in the comments below. I would love to see them and potentially make a video on that in the future. That's all for now and be sure to check out these videos too before you go. Mm -hmm.